Thank you. That was a beautiful, beautiful song and very, very great message. Yeah. Over John 18, and uh, let's stand and read verse 36 to 38. On Wednesdays, we're doing Nehemiah, and we just covered the section there where they stood on a pulpit of wood and the platform, actually, and the desk that we use today. And uh, <clears throat> so as we stand to read the Word of God, because that's what they did when they opened the book, all the people stood. It says there in Nehemiah, we get a lot of what we do today way back then, 2,400 and some years ago. And uh, in 1836, chapter, John chapter 18, verse 36, we uh, see Jesus makes a statement to Pilate while he's being tried. And it reads like this, Jesus answered, talking to Pilate, Jesus answered in 1836 of John, My kingdom is not of this world. That's where we get the song, This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through, right? The kingdom is not of this world. Now, we're talking about national defense. You can take this here. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. That I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, Pilate says here, I find in him no fault at all. So Lord, we thank you for this uh, reminder that we're here to bear witness of the truth, that this is not heaven on earth, no matter what we do, it still be a, pl a planet of the curse of sin on it. And it's, it's amazing that we are the only, the only people, the only planet that's like this. It's totally more than amazing. Thank you that you tapped us on the shoulder so we could be saved and go with you to your kingdom when we leave this earth. So help us to remember the story of the pilgrims now and all they had to put up with, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, be seated. Am I a pilgrim also? So Jesus was saying, I'm just passing through. I'm, I'm here for a project. And then when I complete my project, I'm going back home. I'm going to the country that I'm from. I'm going to the city that I came from. So this week, of course, uh, we hear about the pilgrims very little. I've, I've watched TV, morning shows, and, and the, it's just the now generation. I'm thankful now. They don't mention the landing of the Mayflower. They don't, it's all contemporary. It's, th it's like Canada. It's been watered down to a nothing. Just a celebration to, to buy food and, and, and spend more money without remembering, thanking God. <laughs> for right. this world. And uh, so Jesus said, I'm here to do a job, and that is to bear witness to the truth. And that's what every Christian's job is, to bear witness. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where there is no truth, right? Wrong is right, black is white, and white is black, and in is out, and out is up, and uh, outside, inside, and just chaos. And throw a few microbes in between, it gets even worse, right? Now, the pilgrims, uh, you must understand the pilgrims are one people and the Puritans were another. Okay? Some people think the Puritans, the pilgrims, they were not, they were never the same. 
And the pilgrims that landed in 1620, somehow I've misplaced my Thanksgiving file with all my printouts, but I'll dig them out this afternoon somewhere. They gotta be in that square room up there. And, uh, but we usually post, uh, you know, the, the, the Bill of Laden, the, the names of the 102 people on one sheet that you can have and see if you can track down some of your ancestors, you know, the Smiths and, uh, and, and Bradshaws and all these things. And, uh, but the, the uh, pilgrims were not supposed to land where they landed. As the history says, they, they were pushed away hundreds of miles up the shore to Massachusetts. And the, the pilgrims, the, the definition of pilgrim is a traveler, a stranger, an alien, or a foreigner. And that's what a pilgrim comes from. And they uh, looked up the etymology of the word, how it built in Greek, Latin, and so forth. And, uh, but they all say traveler, stranger, alien, foreigner. Now these were called the separatists, all right? They were being persecuted, they would not follow Catholicism, and then they would not follow, after the Reformation, would not follow the Church of England, which was a new type of Catholicism without a pope. And, uh, and so they had to flee persecution in England and they went up to Holland or the Netherlands, and there they stayed for like 12 years. And then they worked out an agreement to come to the, to the new, new land by investors from England. And it was two boats, as you see in your bulletin. But the Mayflower came over here uh, to get away from religious tyranny, all right? Catholicism and the Church of England at that time. So these were our Baptist forefathers and they were some lost people out of the three that died on the voyage, one of them was a heckler of Christians. I have a story on that, that he, he, he died, he, he never made it. But he heckled those that were God-fearing people. And uh, it's just the, the voyage, <clears throat> I mean, it started in early September and I think they finally got on land about the 16th to the 18th of, de of December. How would you like to land with no electricity, no fuel, no hardly any food, and live on the boat off the shore because you know, if you go to the shore, you may be murdered by the Indians, or the savages, they call them them. So the pilgrims were Baptists, and they were poor separatists, separating from the religious tyranny of, of Europe. And that's why we have separation of church and state to this day is because of the way they were treated over there, and they fled to have freedom. Thanksgiving Day should be a, another freedom day, that we're not gonna be under the tyranny of religion nor government. So in 1620, that uh, took place. 1630, 10 years later, after the pilgrims paid the price, of course, there was only half of them left by March of the, December to March, half of them died from disease and starvation. And then uh, we had 1630, the Puritans. Now these religious people were part of the Church of England, but they were reformers. They were gonna reform it to make it uh, different. But these were the, you might say, the hardcore Protestants in the, were the, in the Puritans. There's, the pilgrims were not necessarily coming for religious sake. They were coming for survival and freedom. The others had money. The Puritans had money. Ten years later, 1830 or 1630, they brought and they came in with their wealth and they bought up stuff and they took over stuff and they created these uh, governments, uh, denominational government, all right? And they persecuted the pilgrims. After so many years, there were only, the pilgrims grew to 20, uh, 2,600 people, where the Puritans in that same time period grew to 20,000 people. I wrote a note a little while ago, denominationalism is man governing God's business. <clears throat> denominationalism 
is man governing God's business. Right. That's what happened in Canada. They, they started a Canadian government system in the church that had flourished for 27 years and splintered in three, three ways now. And uh, it's, it's amazing. And that's what they did. <clears throat> and But uh, Christianity is God governing man's business. That's us. I mean, that's us, right? Christianity is God governing man's business. But denominationalism is man governing God's business. That's why we have never allowed a, a hierarchy system to develop. Amen. We're separatists, are we not? Amen. And we, we want God to tell us what to do, not man to tell us what to do in the name of God. Amen. Now, your Puritans, the Calvinists uh, came out of that. Hardcore pro Protestants of today came from that. Uh, all the spinoffs of Methodism and Lutheranism and Presbyterianism, we call them, uh, over in Europe, they call them the high church, formal denominational religion, including Catholicism. So we want to be pilgrims. We don't want to be Puritans. Amen. Amen. We want to be pilgrims. We want to be able to pass through this life testifying of the truth and go be with our Lord and Savior in our heavenly country. That's what we want to do. So we must keep the uh, attitude of a pilgrim, traveler, stranger, alien, and foreigner uh, ever before us. Now let's look at three Bible examples here of pilgrims uh, in the scriptures. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 2. First, uh, we see as pilgrims and strangers that we were lost. We were lost pilgrims and alien strangers without a country. We were wandering around without a country. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 and 12. Wherefore, Paul says to the Ephesian Christians, wherefore do what? Remember that ye being in time past Gentiles, 2 verse 11 of Ephesians, in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So Gentiles, and of course, you could never be a Jew. But then look at verse 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being what? aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and what else? Strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope without God in the world. So first we see that we were lost pilgrims and alien strangers without a country really not knowing what to do. How many remember when you were lost? You had no concept of God, the Bible, or how the universe works, you were tugged to believe there is nothing besides yourself, and all these mystical things of Hinduism, and transcendental meditation, and voodoo, and all the rest of these uh, superstitions floating around. On Mars Hill, when Paul went to Mars Hill in Athens, Greece, he said uh, they had all these gods and then they made one to the unknown God in case they missed one, right? Yeah. And uh, but then he used that to, to bring them as aliens and strangers against God, bring them into focus to at least they could understand that Jesus Christ came and he is the unknown God. And he tries to bring them to Christ. So first we see here we were uh, and I was, was you? We were lost pilgrims and alien strangers without a country. Secondly, out of three things, and I don't get too anxious here. And uh, second, we know Ephesians 2 verse 13. Uh, so we were lost. Uh, now we, we now are saved pilgrims and alien strangers looking for our country and our city. In verse 13, he goes on, but now, say that, so from lost strangers and pilgrims to now saved, but now 
In Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Praise the Lord. Jump down to verse 19. 219 of Ephesians. What's, what's it say again? Now. Now. All right. How many think you're saved today? No, saved right now. No, I you know, it is something to go to a church. Maybe you're sitting in the car wondering if I'm still saved. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I, you know, people that have told me, oh, I've been baptized six times. I said, hey, none of it's stuck, though, has it? You don't go to church. You don't, you don't do anything the Bible says. I mean, it didn't take, evidently. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Praise the Lord. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So, we were lost pilgrims and now we are saved pilgrims and alien strangers looking for our country. Uh, Philippians 3.20, page or two over to the right. Philippians 3.20 says, For our conversation is in where? Amen. Heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are citizens of heaven. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And aren't you glad to be under the governorship of Jesus Christ? Amen. Aren't you glad we have the ultimate constitution and declaration of independence in our laps and our hands even now? Aren't you, aren't you glad now uh, we kept saying that King James Bible was the first Bible but it really wasn't because King James Bible was first printed in 1611 they brought actually the Geneva Bible is what they brought with them because that was published in 1560 I believe it was and it was the only one that uh, the, just after the printing press the Geneva Bible uh, in its English form was brought and spread around. It was a, a small Bible that could easily be distributed and hidden if necessary. And so the Geneva Bible is the Bible that came with the Mayflower and the others. And then this, the King James came shortly after that because if they landed in 1620, that's only like nine years after the King James was released, so it was too, it was too early for that to be the first Bible here. It had been had not been mass produced yet, and so we had the Geneva Bible, and then the King James followed that. And they uh, I was on one website showing it's just a couple of different spellings like eyes e y e s or e i e s. You know that's almost identical, and, and actually the Geneva Bible came from. The Textus Receptus Greek. That's, that's what the argument is now. The new Bibles do not use the original Greek language. They use the new, the newer ones. They call it older and more ancient, but it's, it is a corrupted version. It leaves out hundreds and hundreds of verses from the Bible we use. And it's a trick to sell Bibles, by the way. And they've succeeded in that. In diluting and people carrying around a Bible that reads like comic books, you know, and this, they live more unholy lives than holy lives. The real Bible would produce a holy life, not an unholy worldly life. Now, Hebrews 11, lastly here, so we now are saved pilgrims and alien strangers looking for our country. Hebrews chapter 11 on the heroes of the faith chapter. 11.13 says something here. And uh, it says, These all died, talking about the martyrs. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were what? Strangers and pilgrims, they did not receive their rewards on the earth. They received their rewards after they left to go to heaven. But they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. 
For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek what? A country. And so we are here doing our job and uh, a, a Christian serving the Lord should not fear death. I mean, Jesus has the keys of death and of hell. Uh, the sting of death, Paul says, that shouldn't bother you at all because you're going to fall on asleep and, and God's going to take you by angelic transportation, maybe we say, and you will pass to the other side to your city and your country for all eternity, never to depart again. Amen. So we were lost, pilgrims and aliens, strangers without a country, uh, but now we now are saved pilgrims and alien strangers looking for our country. Don't we sing that song? I think it's in our new hymn book, Looking for a City. Looking for a city. Remember that? I think that's in that book. And uh, you know how Martha is with the piano. Maybe she can figure it out. And uh, maybe Glenda can keep up with her. And we might learn to sing that. Looking for a city. Thirdly and lastly, so we were lost. Now we're saved pilgrims. We were not looking for a city. We were without a country. But now we are looking for our country and our city. Now thirdly, we never should forget the price paid for our American country and our heavenly country. Never forget the price. When I read the Pilgrim story, it just wrenches me to what these people went through just to get here. And what they went through, Holland treated them good. England treated them like dirt. And uh, they were hunted. They were like wanted poster people. Tyndall, Wycliffe, remember the people that gave us our English Bibles? And uh, turn to Second Peter chapter 2 as we get close to finishing already. So we were lost pilgrims without a country. We're now saved pilgrims looking to go to our country and our city. And we should never Never should forget the price paid for our American country we're in and our heavenly country that we're going to. Now, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Let's pick up there. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Here we go. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now, now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as who? Strangers and who? Pilgrims abstain from lustly flesh, fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. That's why we have guilty consciences because of the war between the flesh and the spirit. Romans chapter 8 tells us that. And then it says here in verse 12 to 15, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. So we're passing through. Don't hang on to, to stuff in your mind. All right? It's all, it's all going to stay here. Every bit of what we think we own Never, we never owned it anyway. Right. Every dead person took nothing with them. Yeah. I mean, billions of people through the centuries and eons of thousands of years uh, took nothing with them. The only thing they took was their last breath. That's the only thing they took was their last breath. So while we're here, he's going to tell us how to live as an example to others that are on this earth. And we're going to get into the government here and how we as citizens should be obedient to decent, God-fearing government. Springfield is still a good town to live in. If you, if you hold Springfield up as a town and New York City as a town, which one do you think? <laughs> or how about any city in California or Michigan or Milwaukee or, you know, Wisconsin or... We got it pretty good here, folks, and it's only because of the gospel of Jesus Christ that 
started the Bible schools and the influx of Christians from all around the country to train to be preachers. Uh, no matter who they were, they came here to really learn how to preach the gospel in these Christian colleges, which are almost non-existent now. So he says that strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Then he gives us what we ought to do. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Keep our word. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works which ye shall be, they shall behold, that they may glorify God in the day of visitation. And uh, while you're at it, verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Now that's a catch. Not just every law a man makes are we to keep. I mean, if we're in China, there's some laws we would not be keeping. If we were in Russia, there's some laws we would avoid. We would disappear. We would be in the basements of homes because their laws are against God. Their laws are not pro-God. They're anti-God. So submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, okay? Whether it be to the king as supreme. Now, if you study Romans chapter 13, verse 7, you'll see more particulars on the government. It says, because rulers are not a terror unto good works, but unto the evil. Now, California, they've got all these restrictions and regulations on the people. They can't you know, losing their businesses in New York, the schools have been shut down again. All these regulations have come out of the mouth of one man, the governors and the mayors. But he says here, submit yourself to everyone who's man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king or uh, as supreme, or to unto governors as unto them that are sent by him, by, by God, sent by God for the punishment of evildoers, so that's what the government is to punish evildoers, keep us safe, and for the praise of them that do well. And they to honor us, the citizens that do well, that's to promote them and show the decent citizen as an example of a, of a good citizen. That's what he's trying to make us see that we should be the example citizen uh, of good government. Yeah. For the praise of them that do well, so, for so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ig ignorance of foolish men. <laughs> so, uh, so we, we are on the earth but we are to live as heavenly citizens. Because when we get to heaven, it will be orderly. The thousand-year reign will be orderly. And so we need to show this order in our lives. When we get saved, as God puts Humpty back together again, you remember when you was Humpty Dumpty and fell off the wall, and all the king's horses couldn't help you, all the driving clinics couldn't help you, all the uh, attic kicking classes couldn't help you, but then Jesus came and he helped you. Yeah. Now, so we must live as heavenly citizens on this cursed planet. So we never should forget the price paid for our American country and never forget that old cross back there, the payment for our heavenly country as well. Now before we close, we've talked about 1620, the landing of Mayflower, and we've talked about 1630, the arrival of the proud Puritans, okay, now the Quakers and the Shakers, all of that is part of that whole uh, high church movement that put Baptists, you know, we had Baptist persecution here in America, you know, before 1776. And that was all of the, because the Puritans wanted a state religion and everybody better be under their domination in the English government. Well, there's a 1619, a year before, the, how many are familiar with the modern term, just came out last year, the 1619 Project? How many are familiar with that? A, a journalist with the New York Times, a uh, African-American woman, 
her husband and one child, wrote a paper stating that 1619, the first 20 slaves were brought into Virginia before the landing of the 1620s, and that she's gone and wrote a paper called the 1619 Project, that our nation started as a slave trade nation. And this uh, doctrine that she has, she won a Pulitzer Prize for this last year, the 400th year of slave trade in the United States of America. Started as a slave trading nation against the African population. And it took off like a rocket. And it's now a course, it's, it's now replacing uh, our history. It's in 3,500 schools this year already. And uh, that's why President Trump said, we're getting in out of the schools. We're not going to have it. And they want him out of the office. And so they want this in the office. They want uh, reparations, of course, for all those going back to 1619. It's called Project 1619. Now, what I found really interesting is that the communists and the socialists hate it. Why would they hate it? you think it would be part of their plan. No, it's part of the doctrine of Oprah and Hillary and airheads in America that want the, the minority race of the slaves to be dominant. It's called uh, African nationalism and uh, black nationalism. Now, the Black Lives Matter Okay, this, this is a part of the spinoff. It's, you know, riots and, and even deaths. But history, the socialists that I studied last night, they say that history rewritten is what they're doing. They're rewriting real history. Socialists say this. They say it is a falsification of the truth. And they don't want this. Why, why wouldn't they want it? Uh, they said they, the 1619 Project, they are replacing history with ideology. They're, they're making you think their ideas are history or more important than real history. No. And so they, they're writing against it of all people, the socialist communists. They're replacing history with ideology. They're dividing the races the reason the communists, the world mantra or cry, I taught on this a year or two ago, is workers of the world unite. Remember that? I brought the past those out. That's, that's the movement, worldwide communist movement, and workers of the world unite. And they say <clears throat> the black worker and the white worker are fundamentally the same worker. We just want to unite people and be able to work together. But with things like this, you'll never have that to come to pass. There'll always be this one group or this other group that's trying to rise above and you know, get payback or something. And slavery has always been a very terrible thing, no matter what you think about it. If you were in their shoes, you would say this is a, this is a terrible thing to be enslaved and on every day you, you can't get ahead you're going to be chained up or locked up or taken good care of, but you still have no freedom. So they're replacing history with ideology. They're dividing the races. <clears throat> we want workers of the world to unite, and uh, this will divide our unity movement worldwide by races and colors of people. We are a million miles away from Oprah and Hillary Clinton's plan, since we are a million miles away from what they're doing. And so we would think that they would want this, but they can't. They want all people to mesh together and be one in this utopian dream they've got called communism. So, <clears throat> so this is their country of the atheists and the lost man. But heaven is our country. Amen. 
in the election, this scrambled eggs right now, uh, it really doesn't matter who wins because in four more years there'll be another election. And uh, Biden was working with China, but you know, that was before he proclaimed himself a lifetime leader like Mao Zedong. Even that has changed to where our leaders that wanted to work with China now say we can't work with China. They want it all, and they want it all for them in communism. Have you ever heard the word ban? It's uh, spelled just like the word D-A-M-N. It's called B-A-M-N. All right, this is, you don't know, these, this is stuff that they know that you don't know. It's an acronym. It says, by any means necessary. That's what the word, code word BAM means. We're going to take everything by any means necessary. And you'll see t-shirts with BAM on it. We don't, we don't know what's going on. But these are the same, very same people that are all kind of mixed together in this this Roderick Stew kind of a government they're trying to bring in. So we must be so thankful to God and God alone this Thanksgiving. We must mention God to everyone we meet. Just like Jesus said, I came for one purpose and that was to bear witness of the truth and then I'm out of here. And he left us to continue on doing that. Aren't you glad somebody put up with us long enough for us to get saved. Amen. Well, we're that lost pilgrim, straying and going nowhere, don't know where, and then we got saved. And now we have a target. It's going to be with Jesus. But we must never forget why we're here, and that is to bear witness of the truth. Amen. And so watch out uh, from these people, the BAM movement, and the Project 1619 is very much, they got lots of money, lots of money. That's why the election's like it is right now. They had international money from all over the world pour in through secret means and channels to buy up all the advertising they could and to run people out of business. So, am I a pilgrim also? Or am I, you know the big mega churches here in town, they're, they're really, they don't know, but they're part of the Puritan system of denominationalism. And we're independent, scripturally baptized believers called Baptists. And those were our forefathers that gave it all. And then the Puritans came in 10 years later and started sweeping it all up, forming their government. Never forget denominationalism is man governing God's business. Never forget that Christianity is God governing man's business. Amen. And I want him to tell me what to do. Because yeah. it will always work. Right. Yes. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. Thank you, Lord, for our real Bible, for the bloodshed and the loss of life and property, so we could be here this morning. Help us raise uh, the message, message of truth that God is in control. And so we ask you now to give us boldness in the faith as we go out and help us to avoid the tyranny of man and the bondage of man and his rules over the things of God. Keep us a free people and make us people with a, a real desire to spread the truth now, even during this crazy time, living in Crazyville right now. So we pray your blessings in Jesus' name, and we ask this, amen. Yes, let's stand and turn to page 289. 289, Project 1619. Be aware of what's happening around us. Page number 289. 289. Thank you. Coming home. Praise the Lord. Country in a city. 